Hey guys and girls and everything in between, this is your podcasting pal, Psycho Steve, and you're listening to my podcast called Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow. Today, we are featuring a very talented musician and a very dear special guy, guitarist extraordinaire from the great band Warren, Mr. Joey Allen. Good day, good morning, good evening, Mr. Allen. How are you? Good everything. I'm good, brother. How are you, man? I'm sitting on a rainbow. Thank you so much for taking the time to, you know, <laughs> sit and talk with us about What color are you want. sitting on, man? <laughs> I am a red fan. <laughs> okay. So, uh, red is my favorite color, even though I'm right. colorblind. So. Sounds like my wife. Yeah? What's your favorite She's color? She's a red girl, yeah. Uh, green, brother. Come on. Oh, of course. I should have said green because I'm Jewish and <laughs> color of money, you know? That kind of Oy thing. Hey, what are you going to say, you know? Exactly. I'm so stuck at, you know? My sugar nut, as my grandmother would call me. Nice. So, yeah. So let's grandma. talk That's about what. Sweet lady. You would really love her. She's 100 years old, and she actually loves Mr. Rainmaker. That's her favorite song. But God bless her. I got. We got to come and hang out, have a beer. Absolutely. Oh, she would. She's Heineken. If you're a Heineken fan, right. you're her best friend. That or I'm she likes. Her, all right. Or she likes martinis. Do you like martinis? We can do that too. Turner's the martini master, so we'd have to get him involved. But he, we would all come out and hang with your grandmother. She sounds like cool. a, a lovely lady. Absolutely. She's a hundred years old. Like I said, she lives in Aventura, Florida. You know, most Jewish. Women and Jewish grandparents. Okay. Really about I, I did not know life. that most Jewish old elders moved to Florida, but most yeah. East Coast do. Yes, exactly. The West Coasters go here, go out to Palm Palm Springs. So let's talk about one. Last album just okay. came out was last year. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Right, and you've been touring yes. for almost a, over a year for it. A year and a, a year and a half on it, yeah. Sweet. And what is going on with Warren currently? I'm still firing on all cylinders. I mean, we're, we, you know, outside of playing about three or three or four new songs live, we, you know, we're, we're concentrating on the older catalog on the first two or three records. And, and so after playing that stuff for, you know, 20, 30 years, you get, you finally get good at it. You know, it's crazy. Sweet. Right it's crazy how that works. So we're having fun, man. We're just uh, we're just out having fun and and rocking and rolling and playing homage to the old and playing some of the new. So uh, that's about it. No new music on the horizon anytime soon. But you never know with us. Right on. Now here's a question: Do you have a favorite Warrant song? I don't. Interesting. I don't. I've never really thought of that. Believe it or not. Gotcha. Um, I'll have to give that some thought, and we'll talk again about that. Absolutely. All right. You know, maybe so, two or three years down the line, I'll have an answer for you. I just, I don't, <laughs> you know what? To me, it's just all, you know, the stuff that that I was involved with creating and, and, and recording and everything, it's just all one big canvas, so to speak. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's, all, it, it's all fun, man. It's all good fun. Now, do you all live West Coast? Like, yeah, there's Rob. two guys in California. Right. There's two guys in Phoenix, and there's one guy in Vegas. Gotcha. So when it came and, to recording uh, this last album, how that happen? Yeah. We all got together in California. There was, there was, uh, it just because the producer, Jeff Pilsen, he's playing in, um, Foreigner now and he's been in Doc and everybody knows Jeff Pilsen. He's out here, his studio's out here. So it's just, you know, three out of six of us were out here. So the other three guys came out and the six of us, you know, Jeff being part of the band at that point, pretty much what his producer is, is, um, you know, the sixth member of the band. And, and we just did it out here. It was a lot of fun. Nice. Now, do you guys each take a part? Like you come in with a certain part that's already been written or you guys just say, okay, we're just going to go in the studio. Um, he's going to lock us in the room and we're going to take a certain amount of time, record the album or things are already pre-written and you guys email each other certain ideas before you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's pretty much the latter there. I mean, we, we, we go through a process that takes a year or two of gathering songs together and people finishing songs or sending ideas in. There's a drop, there's a drop box and we just put it, is our work in there and then we we start voting on it you know and and usually what happens is the full songs that are the most complete 
get worked on, which is how it should be. And then from that point on, it's just all about, you know, pre-production and who's going to play what portion, what part. The guitars have to sometimes <coughs> rub so they're different. And, and it just, that's all pre-production. And then there's some magic live where you just try stuff, you know, right. um, different voicing and stuff like that. As a guitar player, I'm speaking. And the same thing goes for vocals and drums probably are the most solid thing because that's where it all starts you know for any for me my perspective and everything I've ever done is that the drums are pretty much the foundation of of the song and then you take it from there so those are pretty solid going in nice and there you go there's a little peek on the inside that's very cool now uh, as far as in guitars how many guitars mm -hmm. do you have in your arsenal <laughs> Uh, like 10 or 11, maybe 12. I don't, I don't even count anymore. I used to have over 50. Right. Um, I got rid of a bunch. I also got a bunch more and then I stopped collecting over all this because I have a family and right. it's not really, <laughs> it's either like, you know, let's go right. on a vacation or buy a few guitars for 10 grand. You know what I mean? I hear you. It's a, uh, it is what it is. I just, I, I was into it for a while and then I stopped and I just, I'm more of the, the guy that if I don't play it a lot, you know, then it's not a lot of use to me, you know? Right on. So, now, do you have a go-to so guitar? That's like your yes, favorite? Yes, I do. I, I, yeah, I'm with a company called GMP. They're, they're out of San Dimas, California. You can find them at gmpguitars.com. It's a guy named Dan Lawrence. I used to work with Dan at, at uh, Charvel Jackson back in the 80s. Um, I worked there for about two years, and he was actually the guy that did all the all the painting for all those early guitars by Demartini and and uh, Vivian Campbell and all that stuff. So he's he was the artist there, and we just kept in touch forever. We worked together, you know. Once you work for a few years with somebody, you keep in touch. And he started. He actually bought GMP, bought the name from a guy named Cameron, and has wow. run it for you know at least over a decade now. I don't even know how. Old how long he's had it, but he builds great guitars. He's got a CNC machine. They're uh, set necks. It's the real deal. Nice. Um, now, is it... C.C. Bill uses them. Vivian Campbell uses them. There's a bunch of them out there. Awesome. Is it the same pickups that come with it, or do you modify the pickups as well? Work with a company called Rocket Pickups. Okay. And it's basically, we just, you know, it's just basically ripping off an old PAF. Okay. So... You know what I mean? I mean, if you can't find an old PAF that's still strong, then make one and fake it, you know? <laughs> totally get it. Yeah, why not? If you can't ever duplicate some of the older things and, and some of the older metal alloys and stuff like that, but as far as getting it close, you can definitely get it close. Gotcha. Now, how about amps? What do you use as far as an amp? I use Hughes and Kettner out of St. Wendell, Germany. Okay. Um, Very awesome. I use a grand might. Yeah, we're we're endorsed by by them, and they take care of us. We take care of them. They're a great company. Great amps. We've got a new product that's just coming out. But we use Grandmeister thirty sixes. They're thirty six watts. We plug them into two twelve cabinets. Pretty straightforward. I go through a little wireless rig into a into a Morley wah, a mini wah, right into a. Uh, into a Octivider and then into a into a talk box when we play Hole in My Wall and that's pretty much my rig, you know? That's awesome. My, so my star cable your setup. Too. Into hey, is this is this like guitar dot com or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just uh, I've been getting more into like what makes you guys sound so awesome live as well. Are you as a guitar are you a guitar player at all? I can play, but, you know, uh, more vocal than anything. I can sing. Very cool. You know, my kids say, you know, Dad, here's an iPad so you, or an iPod so you can carry a tune. Um, right. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I could play a couple chords here and there. I had cool. a couple of guitars, but unfortunately divorced. Um, they went with that. I so, had that happen once. That's why I sold a lot. When I had the over 50, right. that's why I sold a lot of them because I'd rather just have them be some, they went a lot to the hard rock cafes in, in the world. Right on. So they're out there. Um, yeah, there's a few that aren't out there that I wish I, I still had, but I'm not losing any sleep over it. I mean, I love guitars. I love art. To me, luthiers and guitars, it's all art. 
right. an instrument's an art, a piece of art, and it's it's really what it comes down to is your fingers are about eighty percent of the tone, and the rest of it is what it is. But right. It's still an, a piece of art, you know, to me. An instrument is so. I do love them. If I if I uh, had more expendable cash, I'd probably get back into it a little bit. Who knows? Nice. All right. If you weren't doing guitar, what would you be doing? Like playing, if you weren't a musician, like probably some yeah, engineer know. doing something, computers or some type of engineering. Right, because from what I remember, uh, you did go back to school and you were doing IT for a while. I did do you, IT. I was a database admin. admin. Yeah. Right. Database cool. admin. I, well, I worked for a computer software manufacturer for a while. And then I was a database admin for a while, and then I got out of it and got back into warrant, and here we are. Nice. Love IT, but I just, it's, you know, I did it for eight years, and that's, I'm having fun back in the band and doing what I'm doing, you know, during the week for Pearl, so everything's rocking. Cool, and they give you the flexibility to tour and whatnot, because hi, it's a drum company, it's a, you know, they understand that, hey, you're, <laughs> you're in an international band, I am. It's kind of like it's kind of like a race car driver selling cars, though. Do you know what I mean? You can sell them during the week, and then on the weekends you go race. Right on. Same car you sell. Not that I'm a drummer, but I'm around drummers, many drummers all weekend, all year, or all week long. Um, because I'm just in the I'm in the scene, and I've been in the scene, so it, it's it adds some credibility just because of that. Not that Pearl needs any credibility True. by any means. Um, but for me personally, it adds some credibility. And, and Pearl, if I don't get my job done, then I'm sure I'd get my uh, my ass kicked. But so far, after 13 years, I'm I'm getting my gig done. So I'm I'm uh, blessed to work with a lot of the industry's top professionals and top minds and good good guys. And it's a great community. And and, uh, and that's about it. In a nutshell, nice. for Pearl. Are you the reason why Stephen plays Pearl? Huh. Steven does right <laughs> he played Pearl in the beginning and then he I went know. to he went to a DW because one of the AR guys at Pearl left in the late 80s early 90s and then he's, he come, he came back home he right loves on. his Pearl he loves his Pearl gear nice. and I'm sure Chris Lombardi would have him over at DW if he'd love to be there but you know over over my dead body I love Chris to death but he, he's not he's not going back there nice <laughs> All right, so I'm a, a car enthusiast, and I used to be in the car business. Coincidentally, when you mentioned selling cars, what kind of car do you drive? I've got a Lexus, uh, one of the sedans. Cool. Yeah, nice. I bought one in '91 uh, when they first came out, the LS. Oh, okay. The LS 400. And uh, huh? The LS 400. I think yeah, I got a four. I bought a four. I bought a four hundred when the first year they came out from uh, from uh, Roger Pinsky's son, Greg Pinsky. My my ex wife cut his hair, and I was going to buy a Mercedes. This was right when Warren was happening, and we got oh, everybody had stupid money going around. And, and instead of getting a Mercedes, I went and got a Lexus. And then I just, I've my family's got. I've got an RX, and I've got a a, a LS. So the wife, the wife and the kid are in the RX, and I'm in the LS. There you go. Right on. I was just about to say, do you have any like toy cars, trinkets like that, or a motorcycle? I have kids. I have kids. <laughs> <laughs> you gotcha. I it's feel like, you, you listen, man. <laughs> this is warrant. This isn't like this isn't like Aerosmith or Kiss money. You know what I mean? And it's like I, God and God bless those guys. I mean, it's awesome what they've done. Um, but reality is, is that is that um. You know, sure, if I had it, I'd have all that. But I just, uh, I'm a responsible husband and, and, and father. So that's all you that's get, two Lexuses awesome. in the driveway. It's not yeah. bad, you know? No, it's so awesome. They're great cars. Come on. And you're smart yeah. with your money because they're, they, they will outlive you. As long as you're they, probably they, I, on. One of them's 10 years old and it looks like it's one. It's beautiful. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Awesome. See, see, so, maybe I've got a little hook on my nose. I don't know. I don't know. You never, you never know. know. It could be Alan Witz. I don't know. All right, yeah, uh, Alan Witz. 
There you go. Alenstein, which do you prefer? Um, some of my band boys call me Alenstein sometimes. Right on. Okay. That's funny. Isn't so, it? I, <laughs> so I should say happy or uh, belated New Year. Um, right. <laughs> so, um, in your car, what do you have in your CD player currently? Ooh, good question. <laughs> Last great nation. You've never heard of them, have you? No. Tell us about them. Uh, super, super, super heavy band um, of MIT guys. Right. One of them's the guy I know is uh, Greg Karuba, uh-huh. and his brother is is uh, is the VP of Pearl. Wow! And he's got a metal band called Last Great Nation. Everybody should go check them out if they like heavy, heavy stuff. Okay. It's just it's just brutal. Right. You know. Okay. It makes Metallica look like the Partridge Family. It's just killer. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, musicianship all over the place and just rad heavy and just, just raw and killer. And that's one. Right. Uh, I have, I have Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Of course. You have to. Because there's, because there's a thing out here called traffic. <laughs> and if I don't have something to mellow me out, I, I just want to run somebody over. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I live in Jersey. So, so yeah. there you go. So that's like, that's like my putting on, you know, like people put on like Beethoven or Bach. I just drop a little bit of Gilmore or Waters on instead and okay. it kills me right out. Right on. Okay. There you go. Uh, and then another buddy of mine, believe it or not, out of Oklahoma City, uh, the Rev. Do you know who the Rev is? Yes. Bass player. He, he's yeah. played in Mountain. He's played in with Shanker. Yes. He has a solo record. I don't know if it's a solo record, but he's got a band, and that thing's just sick. I mean, it's like it's like uh, listening to like old Vi and, and Billy Sheehan's records. Wow! Uh, like Eat 'Em and Smile or something like that. But but like today, you know. Right on. And, Nothing wrong with that. It's a, it, dude, it's a, he's asked me to write a line, like a liner note for him because I just I keep on telling him when are you putting it out, when are you putting it out, it's killer, it's killer, it's oh, killer. Oh, so it's not even released. This is stuff that no, 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 no. It's coming out like November, I think. So okay, cool. But it's okay. killer. You should check it out. You should, you should, uh, you should. What is it, it called? Jeff Martin's on drums. He's slamming it, and and I don't know who the guitar player is, but and then Rev Rev singing and playing. So. Those are the three CDs I have. I've got empty slots because there's just no good music anymore. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I was going to ask you, do you listen to any current <laughs> new bands? Because in my opinion, there is a couple of new bands out there that are pretty decent. You know what? I'm so busy and the medium of music is I grew up with it, which would be radio. I just don't drive around a lot. I'm just, I'm in front of my computer working so much during the day. And, right. and you know, you're looking at, you're looking at, if I've got gigs on the weekend, you're looking at an easy 60 to 70 hour work week for me. So, yeah. so, so diving into some new music, I'd love it, but it has to be spoon fed to me. So if you want to turn me on to a few new bands, I'll be sure to go check them out. Well, I've been listening to a band called The Struts. They're a new I've heard band of struts. Uh, the struts and are, are they are they new? Newer or new ish, whatever you want to say. Uh they've been out for a couple of years. Okay. Uh I, I think they're pretty good. They uh, actually did direct support for the stones a couple of years ago. Yep. So. I'm I'm in front of my computer, so I'm checking it. I'm and like then, a rock band. Yeah. And then Greta Van Fleet. I've heard them. I got that CD and Zeppelin. I listened to it. Yeah, very Zeppelin feel. And then... <laughs> you think? Yeah, just a little. And of course, I, I, I'm a big fan of Sons of Apollo, which is, you know... I've heard of them band. too. I got to go listen. I haven't listened to them. Okay. That's like the... Super the only one out of those three I've listened to is Greta Van Fleet. And, I, and let's just put it this way. I listened to it once and that was it. Right done right so those are the three yeah. like newer bands that I listen to but I listen to like your new CD I listen to like you know other bands that have been out you know for a while like right. I listened to Judas Priest last album which was great and you Priest know, opened for Deep Purple last Thursday night and it was yeah. one of the best shows I've seen in a long time it was killer yeah I saw them over here in Jersey and I was just like wow 
And I, I was just, I was on thinking, fire. Right. I was just like dumbfounded that why Priest would open for them. I thought it, it was like a co-headlining shift, but who am I to say? Yeah, I think maybe, uh, who knows? I mean, but I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to go on after Judas Priest ever, especially I now. I mean, Halford's like, Halford's like taught better than he was back in the day and during extreme for vengeance and everything. Those guys are amazing right now. And then, you know, God bless, you know, both KK that you talked to today and, and, and Glenn right. Tipton, who I grew up on, man. I mean, that was, those were my guys growing right. up. I was in the priest straight for like two years, you know, during like British steel, unleashing East British steel and screaming for vengeance. That was my band, you know, point of entry. Right. You know, and, and, and seeing them with two other guys, I mean, Faulkner's just shredding right. crazy. And and he's great to watch. And the other guy, I could barely hear because Richie Faulkner was so loud. Right. But when I could hear him, he played great, you know? Yeah, and he's um, a really good producer because he produced their last album, Andy Sneak. Yeah. Or Snap. I think that's how you pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, well, that's not Tom Allen. No. Tom Allen produced the last record. I thought it was Andy. No, oh, Tom oh. Allen did. You're talking about Flamethrower? Yeah. Yeah. Let's look. Let's look. We can talk while I look. Okay. All right. I'm so, pretty sure uh, Tom uh, Allen, because Tom yeah. Allen, didn't Tom Allen do Screaming for Vengeance? I, yes. All right. So speaking of bands that you grew up in, if there was a band that you could perform with, record with, or play out live with, dead or alive, who would it be with? By the way, it's Tom Allen and Andy Sneap. Okay, so there you so go. Half right. So we were both right. We were both yeah. right, right? We can be, we can both agree to be right. Absolutely, because we are. It doesn't happen very often. So wow. what band would I want to be in? Yeah. Dead, alive, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Shit. That's a great Never question too. Um <laughs> Hmm, that's a tough one, man. I mean, look, I grew up on Priest. I grew up on Maiden. Right. Um, you know, obviously it wouldn't be Van Halen because you can't be in Van Halen. There's there's no way. Um, like one of those bands, probably like a like a Priest or a Maiden. Right on. You know? With that would Deano be a bucket, like, or like, Dickinson. Um, you know, I did see Deano with them when I was young. Wow! I saw really? Deano, they, yeah, Deano. I saw him on the Killers tour. They opened up for um, UFO. Wow! At, Cal at Long Beach Arena. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, pretty metal, right? So, so do is- I ma- do I pass your metal test? Yeah, <laughs> you, you just like went off the Richter scale with that. That that's that's. Just- that's freaking incredible. Was <laughs> and, and, and by the way, when UFO? when UFO was playing, when UFO was playing, it was Shanker. It wasn't. It wasn't anybody else. That that was, see, that see, you're even more metal than I am. Wow, I'm just like I'm go. down there down as I'm talking to you. That's, <laughs> that's freaking killer. No pun intended. I had a conversation just, with uh, what's his name, the drum, the old drummer from Slipknot, Joey Jordanson. Jordanson, yeah. Yeah, I was having a like a dinner party one night, a Pearl thing, and he was there, and it was still in Slipknot, and he ordered some evil drink, and I go, "What's that, bro?" He goes, "Oh, you're not very metal, dude. You don't know this drink." What is and it? I just looked at him. I go, "Dude, I saw Maiden with Diano. Sit the fuck down." And he's like, "No, you didn't. No, you didn't." And I'm all, "I did." And he goes, "I'm so sorry, man. I didn't." You know, it was just funny. Uh, a funny night. There you go. A little humor. Wow. Little. That is that's awesome. So, did you take his Pearl? endorsement away I'm kidding I did not he's a good guy he's a good guy good good drummer talented dude bummer bummer he's not in his band anymore that sucks yeah but he's he's doing another project though he's doing his own thing from what I understood good Good. I wish him the best me too All right. what was your first concert uh, it was Kiss Love Gun Tour it was Cheap Trick they did three nights at the forum and I was at night three Wow. It was Cheap Trick opening. Cheap Trick was on the, I think, Heaven Tonight tour. Nice. Okay. There you go. Right on. All right. So with all the bands that you... Nice. And with all the bands that you have ever performed, you know, on tour with and everything, do you have any, like, horror stories with them or it's all been pretty good because you know you're you're a rock well, there, dude, there's always shit when you're young and you're out on the road it's like it's like it's like high school with hair and steroids it's just 
it can get stupid, you know, right. especially with all the egos flying around. I mean, you got two bands, and in two bands, you could have, you know, four, uh, you could have like eight or nine musicians in the building at any given time. And if you start doing that shit, it's like, it's like a powder keg of, of testosterone and ego and, you know, all kinds of shit goes down. So there's bands we've toured with that, that we, that we haven't gotten along with at times. And then, you know, later when you get a little older and you're more mature, you go, Hey dude, what's up? And good to see you. And everybody's cool, you know, and it's all water under the bridge. So, I mean, the, the, the horror stories of playing with some bands in the eighties and nineties, I, I, it's not even worth talking about them. It's so long ago and so juvenile, you know? Right. Um, I, I wish everybody out there, no matter if they're playing arenas or playing, playing state fairs or playing clubs or doing whatever, as long as they love what they do. And as long as there's people out there that want to hear it, God bless them. Rock and roll. Absolutely. You know? Nice. Now you're a California native. I'm not. Right? Oh, okay. I'm not. Where are you no, from I'm originally? A, I'm, a, I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, okay. When did you move to California? Early, when I was like seven. Oh, okay. So, but, all right. So, virtually, you are somewhat of you're <laughs> more or less a California native. Technically, so maybe, maybe, maybe technically, I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I grew up in California. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. the question is that you grew up in the scene of all the hype. Besides the band that you have been in, you, did you get to see some of the greats as they were coming up into the scene? Like, <laughs> like, like Alan. And like Never that. saw Van Halen in a club. Went with Lars Ulrich from Metallica way before Metallica because we thought they were going to play a club. And we went to a place called the Starwood one night, and okay. and they didn't show up. But who did play was a band called Snow, who had a guy in the band called Carlos Cavazzo, who went on oh, really? to Quiet Riot. Quiet Riot, right? And and Snow was great. Okay. And, and they they actually just did a reunion show out here, I think, at the Whiskey or something. I, I should have gone. And I know Carlos. He's a good friend. So, yeah, I uh, never saw Van Halen. Who else in club scenes? Well, Guns N' Roses, up. sure. Yeah. I was just about to say Guns N' Roses. Uh, yeah, okay. sure, yeah. Right. And then you played along with Rat and Doc and... and LA I saw Rat when D. Martini was in a band called Enforcer. Wow. Okay. With a guy named Rob Lamouth, and he and my band played. Then Forcer played with D. Martini and Rob Lamouth, and then Rat played, and it was a super Sunday, and it was in Santa Ana, California, in a place called Handlebar Saloon. And and Rat was uh, Jakey e. Lee, I think, was in Rat. I think Robin, maybe, and Jake. I think. Gotcha. Um, yeah, long that's, time ago, man. That's very cool. Do you have uh, any of the old flyers? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, okay. we got all that stuff in, in too many bins in my garage. It's getting ready to get get uh, reorganized. <laughs> I was going to say, would you ever consider coming out with like a book or anything to, you know? I so don't like, have time. I mean, it'd be fun, but I don't have the time, man. I totally get it. You know what I mean? It'd be it'd be totally fun to go through all that stuff and just. But I just you know maybe maybe like ten years from now when I'm not when I'm if I'm still doing just if at that point I'd probably just be doing the band. Right. Be retired from the private sector. You know what I mean? Totally get it. Uh, so when Warren broke out and got signed to the major label, everything everybody gets then gets a big check for it in advance and, <laughs> you know not like they do today unfortunately so what did you buy with your first advance my first advance of uh, i think it was a thousand bucks or 500 bucks that was oh. it i think that okay. i think that's a big check <laughs> no i um, thought it was more but no. okay no i mean that's the, that was it i mean we got an advance and we were living our, our our living expenses were paid but we didn't have to you know i didn't have to have a day gig anymore at that time which was nice Right. Um, I went out and bought a pair of five hundred dollar cowboy boots. Wow, like Kings and Van Ice. Yeah, dude, come on, man! It was the time to do that. Absolutely. What? What? Right? And was it? Was it like Pardon? teal it was or an ostrich, bro? Ostrich. Black ostrich. 
Okay. Well, this is you really still own them. Come on. <laughs> huh? I was going to say, do you still own them? <laughs> I sold them in like a garage sale for a buck a piece. Like they were so thrashed. Some some dude from Santa Ana bought them, and he might still be kicking around in them. Nice. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty oh. funny, man. No, that is very funny. All right. All right. So, how about a royalty check? What did you buy when you got your first like royal, real royalty check? The big one? Yeah. Maybe a house. I don't remember. Car. I don't remember. Nice. Yeah, yeah something like that. Nice. Yeah, right. Fun stuff, right? Absolutely. There was a year or two of that. Gotcha. Now, uh, everybody has their little thing, like a couple of your members of your band have their own record label. They have their own liquor or anything like that. Yes. Uh, do you plan on, when you do have time, doing something like that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a marketing guy. It's kind of silly to say that because I know so much about it, but it's just, I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to go market myself. I'm a guy that just, I'm, I'm, I've got some skills from education that I, they take with me. I've worked in private business for, wow, 21 years at least while right. I've been in this band. Um, you know, and, and that's what I do. You know, I got a real gig and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I love it. It's, it's, but it's a real gig. I get up at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday, sometimes on Saturday, depending on what I got to do. And I work. And, and then when the band rolls around, that's when it's fun for me. Right. Um, but it's still work. I mean, when, when we get it roll into a city on a Thursday night, you know, after flying all day while I'm working on the plane online, um, everybody goes to sleep and gets up at 10. I get up at, you know, at literally 7, 7.30 Nashville time where, where Pearl is and I have meetings and I, I, I conduct business and, and sell a lot of drums and, and, and I love it, you know, but it's a responsibility just like a day gig for anybody. Got so there you go. That's what I do. And I, and I don't know if I do better that way um, than the other guys do with their side projects. This isn't really a side project to me. If anything's a side project, and I hate to say it, it'd be the band because the band doesn't take a lot of effort for me. You know, awesome. we've been doing it for so long; it's just natural. The reason why we do it is because we love to do it. I do it because I love to do it. I don't do it for any other reason. I don't. I don't. Don't want to sound cocky, but I don't necessarily need the money. I, right. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to make money. Right. Um, I think it's good. It's a good thing to to work and pay taxes and be a responsible, you know, citizen. <laughs> um, right. But but I really just do it because I love it. So there's no there's no mis mis uh, understanding, you know. Okay. Do you have any rock star friends that you can actually say that if and when you do have time, like you can come over, or you go over their house. You mentioned um, uh, Carlos Cavazzo. Um, but yeah, I think he lives me. up in LA. We don't hang out because he lives in LA. If he lived down here in where I live in the, in the Orange County, right. Orange Curtain as they call it, right. um, we we might hang more. But um, really, the only guy I hang out with the most is, is probably Kevin Baldy's from Lit. He's the bass player from Lit. Okay. And and we live so close that our kids went to the same like preschool, and I've known Kevin forever before when when Lit was called Razzle. Cool. And so when we saw each other three or four years ago, we started hanging out, and now our families are as tight as you can get. I mean, our kids play all their – they're close to being best buddies, best friends. I think they are. You know, two cool. six-year-old boys, so they're beating the shit out of each other all the time, too. You know what I mean? Cool. Does your but, son, uh, yeah, that's probably it. Nice. Does your son have any interest in learning how to play guitar? He's He's been in a piano for a year and a half since he was yeah. five. Cool. Um, so, you know, he picked up one of my one of my guitars today and just plugged into a Marshall in the front in the music room, and he turned it on, put his earphones on like a good boy, and turned it on, and he he, he slammed it out. You awesome. know, but he's he's six. You know what I mean? Right. It's all about it's all about cartoons, dude, and Minecraft, and yeah. Those I have a nine and a half year old and a six year old. 
six and a half. Okay, so your six year old, I'm sure, is a lot like a lot like mine. You know? Yeah, absolutely. My nine and a half year old's all about anime. And yeah, he told me all about it yeah. today. He's just like, "Oh, Dad, you know this?" I'm like, "No." And then he's like, "Oh, I also fixed my Xbox." Because <laughs> you're old, Steve. You're old. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you would need to send me this stuff so I know what to talk to you about and how to talk to you. You know. But he doesn't um, want you to know. <laughs> no, I'm his best friend. Both my sons say I'm their best friend. Well, and that's good. Everything, which is really awesome. That's good. Yeah. We played with Skid Row last weekend, and I was talking to Scotty Hill who's a good friend and right. his son Seven Marshall and then Snake's got some stepsons right. that he's cool with and been around for like six or seven years and he, he told me he's like having to take their their money away and shit because they're just being incorrigible and you know they're just teenagers or whatever and I'm just like I looked at him and I go dude what, what were we doing back then come on <laughs> and he's like we're laughing you know but right. you gotta be a good parent and you know if it means being a hypocrite sometimes and hopefully you can work your way around it and and um teach your kids something lasting and good right absolutely you know and, and my kids they, they like they think it's funny and they tell their friends they pull their teacher hey my dad does a podcast and you know it's funny and uh, and my oldest son wears i have a hat i have like merch that we made and um he wears it and everything he's like my walking talking billboard which is great oh like, that's great uh, there you go you know and he's uh, hounding me my oldest more than my youngest he's ha- his name's jack he's like hey dad you know i was watching american scott talent kiss was on it i'm like i know jack and he's like well you know my first concert was there i'm like it was kiss i'm like i know i took you and he's just like um they're ending can we go and I'm just like, you just made my heart smile, you know? And yeah. he's like, yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, if your brother wants to go too. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, anytime you want to go to a concert, it doesn't have to be just kiss. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm like, all right. And because my ex-wife took them to a kid's pop concert <laughs> and they called me from it crying because they were so miserable at the concert. They're like, the music's bad and mom's really boring. I'm like, wow. I yeah, my, uh, yeah, my, uh, my parents, my mom, because I have two older sisters, my first concert was the Osmond. Wow. And it was, in, I lived in Charlotte and it, it was like, I was crying at it. I was six or something like that. And then my dad took me to see, I think Glenn Campbell and Jerry Reed. And it was like, all right, there you go. Now we're starting to do something better. <laughs> it was country, but it was still great guitar players. and just Oh yeah. Stuff, Glenn's you know? speaking stellar on guitar. Dude, Glenn, listen to Jerry. Jerry's stellar. The, both those guys were shredding, dude. Um, right on. But anyways, yeah. Nice. Awesome. What comes around goes around. Take your kids to kiss. That'll be fun. Absolutely. I want to take them to see you guys, too. So Let me know. You're always welcome whenever you're ready. Awesome. You hear that, Jay? We're allowed to go. You have to take your kids, too. It's awesome. So. Yep. <laughs> Bring the Thank kids. You. Yeah. Kid friendly. Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. <laughs> I got three of them. <laughs> You got three. It's all right. We'll make room on, room for him. Okay. Right on. All right. So, a um, couple more questions. All right. What are, what are we promoting today? Like, if what could we tell people as far as in social media, how to get in touch with you, and things like that. Yep. If we're on Facebook. It, it, for like, look for warrant. Um, right. I don't even know. I mean, do I have to like? Am I bouncing out URLs right now? Uh, if um, you don't mind, or you could just we got warrantrocks dot warrantrocks dot com. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Facebook dot com slash Joey Allen's me. Right, and then you got warrant three hundred. What is it? Facebook dot com warrant rocks. Okay. There you go. And then awesome. we got we got warrantrocks dot com, and that's it. It'll give you all our dates. We do meet and greets. Bar mitzvahs, you know, oy vey. I was just about to ask Birthdays. you, do you do bar mitzvahs? If you want, let's do it. Let's bring it up. Right so, on. All right. I, I'm going to talk to my little monsters about that this weekend, actually. To see I want my want yarmulke it. to have some hair on it, though, man. I told you, and you remember, I lost my hair in the divorce, too. That's why my yeah, show is called Every Day Gone like, Tomorrow. Let's, like break, let's, <laughs> let's break some out, bro. Come on. A- absolutely. Can we, well, we can make some yarmulkes? 
Yeah, my girlfriend's a costume designer, so I think we can get her to do that. So let's just let's see if she can help a brother out. Absolutely. Also, make warrant yarmulkes. Sure, you know? let's do it. Let's you know? do it. Awesome. All right, Mr. Allen, it was amazing to speak to you again. As always. Hey, thanks for the time, man. Glad we got together. Thank you, Joey. I very much appreciate you, man. Take care, guys. All right, peace. You too. Take care.